G'day guys, welcome back to Supercoach with DR and welcome to the round seven review video. As you know, on the Friday afternoon, I did make some sacrifices to the Supercoach gods. I offered up some gifts in order for them to bless not only me, but the whole community. It worked out okay for me. Don't know how it worked out for you, but look, they didn't reward me with a massive type score, but they certainly did reward me with an above par score for the round. So 21.56 in the top 1% for the round, which is really, really good. And the best thing out of all is that season rank is now almost at that 1K mark. So 1,074 after drifting outside the top 2K over the last three weeks. So heading in the right direction again. Hopefully it's just not going to be a one-week type thing. Hopefully I can keep the momentum up. And I do have a bit of cash in the bank, which is handy. Last week when I was looking to make my trades... It was literally down to the last 10 minutes before the Doggies game started. And I think, and I thought, you know, who am I going with? Originally, it was the McRae combo, Jack and Finlay. In the end, I thought Finlay, just not viable. If I went up to Jack, that means that I could make the single trade just from Dunkley because I didn't have enough cash in the bank to be able to do that. So I thought, all right, well, I'm, I'm not going to go with Jack. I'm not going to go with that absolute Uber. I'll look for a little bit more value. So then I looked at someone like a Jared Lyons, and he was someone who I'm really keen on, still really keen on. I think Spills might have actually traded him in. I'm not too sure if you went through with it, mate, but uh, fingers crossed that you did because that would have been an awesome trading, buddy, an awesome pod there in Lyons. But didn't go with Lyons. I thought, nah, want to look for a little bit more value. Then I thought to myself, look, I've probably got to get a forward in, you know, one of these forwards with DPP. And I looked really closely to Dane Zorko, but I said to myself, look, I've been saying no all season all pre-season i even had the trap symbol on him just due to that durability his age but i thought no i can't do it i can't do it i want to wait wait just one more week just to see what his role's like on, on the weekend so there was one man that i was really really keen on uh he was under 500k and that was andy brayshaw so i decided to go and get andy brayshaw and then i was going to pair him up with jai farrah end up changing that decision again I had him as my best buy in the stock market video out of the forwards this week, but I ended up going with R2D2 as well. So I made a little bit more cash there or a little bit more points on field anyway. So that worked out all pretty good in the end. But remember, I'm not counting all my chickens yet. It was a good trade in, but yeah, we never know what can happen this week. So I will keep this one pretty short this week. I won't talk too much about the individual players because I'll obviously do that in length in the stock market video. But what I will do is I'll talk about some of my plans, I suppose, for the future, what I'm looking at doing in the next sort of two, even three weeks. Um, and obviously talk a little bit about each of the players also. But uh, yeah, wrap with the round uh, that was in round seven. And just another quick note as well, I forgot to say, my Instagram at the moment, I cannot jump on because, long story short, I had to reset all my passwords just due to security stuff on my emails and, and all this sort of business. And of course, I forget what password that I changed it to, the Instagram, so I thought I'll go back to email, reset it, and you wouldn't believe it, I've forgotten what password I changed my email to, but I've written it down on a little sticky note somewhere. It should be somewhere around the house. But look, worst case scenario, I may even have to make another account if I can't find the password to it or the password to my email at least. Uh, that'll be, yeah, a bit of a bugger to do, but hopefully I won't have to. Um, hopefully I can just find this bloody piece of paper. So uh, in saying that, let's get into it, guys. See how the team actually went. And uh, as I said, not too bad this week. So the man that we'll start with is probably my favorite starting pick of 2021 so far, and it's Tommy Stewart. This is a man last year who I had in for the second half of the season and basically did not let me down. There was one game where he went, I think, around a 60, which was really disappointing. It was actually the first round that I got him in in 2020. And after that, just didn't go below the ton. So he was a pretty easy selection this year, a really safe selection. And he's now made his way up to 576K. So that's off the back, obviously, of a really big score with that 150. Followed that with a 120-odd. And now 114. So I've sort of pegged him, and again, I'll say it every week, from an 85 to a 110 most weeks. But that 85 is now slowly starting to shift up to probably more of a 90, I think. You're not going to really see Tommy Stewart go below a 90 anytime soon, I don't think. And now I've probably given him the jinx, obviously, so don't go anywhere near him now. No, but look, if you don't have Stewart, he's really, really hurting you at the moment. And look, I had Jordan Medley absolutely as a D1 for 2021. And I still think that, but I think that Tommy Stewart is pretty much a clear second at this stage. So wrapped to have Tommy in my side, just such such a consistent type pick. 
The Seagull, 109. Yep, beautiful. Can't complain with that. So what's he now? 562K. So he's gone down almost 100K since the start of the season. So if you're not stacked for round 14 buy players, I think he's just going to be a really good selection at that price. And I really don't see him going much lower than that, the Seagull. He's never going to give you those absolutely terrible type scores. He's always going to be hovering around that 100 mark and hopefully 100 plus more weeks than, uh, than not. So yeah, happy with that. And if you didn't start with him, then you'd probably be happy also because you can get him at this stage at 100k cheaper, which is always nice. Jordan Ridley, yeah, didn't look back to his absolute best, did he? But certainly not a bad game, I wouldn't say, from Ridley. Probably main concern for me is that if you look at his kicking percentage rates from, what was it, rounds one to five, missed round six, he, he was clearly the number one in the league. But yeah, tended to lose a couple of those kickouts over the weekend. So I hope that's not a pattern. I hope he gets back to that. But uh, yeah, slight concern there that there may be some points lost if that's the case. Rory Laird, a bad week. Is that a really inconsistent type season, Laird? So tends to have a bad week, bounce back for a couple, another average sort of one. So his average is, yeah, again, down to 100.4. Well, that was looking close to 105 and in good form looking for 110. So certainly still time to turn that around. But yeah, it's been a pretty disappointing selection for us, I think, this year, uh, Laird. Shorty, 116, so I was pretty concerned about him last week. I was questioning his role, what's Hooley doing, doing to him. But, uh, yeah, when you see a game like that from Short, you, you're almost relieved again. You think, no, 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 he's a good selection. But you don't want to be doing that from week to week. You know, you want to be... Like someone like a Tom Stewart, for example, you just never worry that he's going to pump out a 60-odd type score. But with Short and a couple of these other guys, then you may be a little bit worried. Not not a Lloyd or a Ridley, and not even a Laird. When I say a couple of guys, other defenders, not necessarily in this lineup here. But yeah, it is concerningly short that uh, he hasn't had the most consistent year in regards to scores. But 116, I'll take every day of the week. And average up to 97.7 for the season. So still below par for me. Uh, I hope that he can get at least 102 plus for a season average. Jordan Butts, 88. Just fantastic. You know, when I need him, he's delivered, I think, two weeks out of the three. So he did give me about a 37-odd type score when I need him the other week. But apart from that, he's given me, I think, was an 85 and another 88. So absolutely stoked starting with Butts this year. Now, I've got a really big decision on my hands with Butts this week. I think he's the perfect bloke to really have on your bench, ideally on your bench, up until the buy rounds and flip him then. But I've yeah, I'll talk about this big decision I've got to make in a minute. Uh, Mansell, 46. That's probably what you expect from him. I think he was uh, predicted to go about a 44, I think. So made a little bit of cash. What's that? 56K, started at 102. Not wrapped with this selection. He's not going to score too well. But if he's playing, that's okay, I suppose, at this stage. And Tommy Highmore, surely he's got to come in this week. I know I've been saying it every week since, what, round three, round four. But... Surely, after a really good showing in the VFL over the weekend, he's got to come into the side. Uh, who knows? You can't say any more than that rather than just, yeah, cross your fingers and pray, I think. Uh, onto the midfield now. So Sam Walsh, this bloke has been such a terrific selection. I only had him for two weeks now, but give me two consecutive 130 scores. He just does everything, this man. He's clearly the number one midfielder at Carlton these days. You know, Paddy Cripps, he just looks like, a bit of a shell of his former self at the moment, doesn't he? Kicked a nice goal over the weekend and did a couple of things, but this is the new man at Carlton. And uh, look, it is a bit of a concern that the attention will go to Walsh. I've got no doubt about that now. I don't think teams should even worry putting much time into Paddy Cripps because he's just not damaging enough at the moment. So Walsh will have to be the man, I think, that they go to tag. So that could affect him a little bit, but I think he'll learn to get through the tags and with his elite endurance then even if he needs to go on the outside for a little while run his man ragged that's always an option as well um to try to sort of warn off the tagger so i'm wrapped with this selection he's an absolute young gun i wish i had started with him but still happy i've got him in fairly early in the season anyway oliver just such a safe pick 116 again I just love this man. I love watching the pig play. One of my favorite players in the AFL. You know, he's not the most highly skilled type player, but he just gives his all each week. Gives his absolute all. Contested beast, as we know. I uh, love the pig. Yeah, great selection. If you haven't got him in your side, he's just a real easy trade-in. You know, round 14 buy is probably the only thing that puts you off him. But he, he's priced at 591. He's below Sam Walsh now. 
Um, and I know that it's a 113 average compared to 120, but I really rate Oliver, and I think he's close to a must-have in their midfields, to be quite honest. Just get him in when you can, in my opinion. Uh, Zeret, well, he's had a really good last three weeks, so he was hovering, you know, some of those mid-90 type scores, low 90 scores for a couple, but then he's really hit back. So still not going those monster scores that we'd like to see, those sort of 130s, even a 140 here and there. We haven't seen that from Zeret, but... Look, if he can go, you know, around that 110 mark, I'll be happy from him at this stage. Mitchell, again, a 105. I'm almost wrapped with a 105 from Titch, and that's not why I brought him in to be happy with a 105. You know, I want to be seeing 135 plus from Titch, but that's not going to happen anytime soon, I don't think. Disposal count was down a little bit over the weekend, so given the fact that that was down and he scored above the ton, I suppose that's a good sign. I still wouldn't be advocating to bring Titch in. I know they've got a few injuries there in the midfield. O'Meara, uh, you know, Wingard's injured at the moment. But, yeah, he's just not scoring well enough. Yeah, champion data just don't like him. And, look, he's not doing himself a heap of favours either with the way he uses the ball and some of the decisions that he's been making. I think there was one the weekend where he's almost gone across his body in the middle of the ground to almost less than a 50-50 contest. And you just think, Titch, what are you doing? You could have got it at least inside 50. Oh, look, who knows? You don't. You can't see the vision down the ground sometimes. So he may have had absolutely no options. I don't know. But I think that there were some options down there and he's just made a bad decision. So just a, one example, I suppose, of some the frustrations of being a Titch owner. Brayshaw, as I said, trade him in this week. He went absolutely bananas. I reckon he was on about seven possessions in the first five or so minutes. He just went absolutely nuts. Massive, massive scare. I think it was in the third quarter where it looked like he had a pretty severe injury. It looked like he'd done, you know, what's that with the syndesmosis to the ankle, I think was mentioned by the commentators. And I've just gone, you know, you're absolutely joking me. Super coach gods, why? You know, just my luck this week. But amazingly, came back on the ground. And I've got so much respect for him because he was obviously, you know, in a little bit of pain for a while there, but really pushed through. Didn't like look like he's running, was even hampered. So I hope that he doesn't get too sore during the week and needs a week off just to recover and get back from that. But yeah, super stoked with this selection. And look at under 500k, he's one of the blokes that I thought the, the value was almost too good to ignore. Still a bit of risk in this pick. And look, we know that he hasn't dealt well with the tag for a couple of weeks in particular anyway. So certainly, yeah, as I said, don't count all your chickens yet with this pick. But the value was just there and you couldn't ignore this. And if you looked at the other players around his price point and their season averages. Yeah, he was clearly just a standout there. And those two games have really hurt him, but it's been really beneficial for the blokes that have just dumped, jumped on him this week in particular. So, uh, yeah, super Brayshaw for now. And talk about respect for a player, Tommy Powell. Again, I thought this bloke was done and dusted, concussed. Uh, I think that the villain was Bailey Fritch's elbow, I think it was. I don't think anything intentional. I'm not, not saying that. But this young man, it, it looked like he was gone for all money on the bench and then just made his way back into the game in the second half. I think he was on about 54 points at half time. So to end on 97, you know, coming out in the second half and doing what he did, you know, against the flow because Melbourne were killing him by this stage in the second half. Just terrific, phenomenal. So, yeah, Brayshaw and Powell, Powell in particular, as a young man who I think was a lot sore than Brayshaw, it would look like that anyway, just... Yeah, just you'd be really proud of him, wouldn't you? Particularly as a North supporter. But as a super coach owner, yeah, I'm like a proud father with Tommy Powell. So, yeah, I can't see myself trading him anytime soon. But he's still got money to make. Such a reliable on-field option. Why on earth would you look to trade him at the moment when he's been pumping out 90s to 100 type scores? It, it's absolute gold as a rookie at the moment. Now, Errol, I was close to actually trading him out in the weekend. But as you can see, sorry, I didn't even mention who I did trade out. He's in the back line. I ended up going out Heath Chapman because, you know, I went back to the stock market notes and he was that bloke in the back line that was in the red. And it just made sense that I, I could use that Laird DPP. Laird was in my midfield. I thought I can swing him back. It's a little bit dodgy, the back line at the moment. And that way I can still play Powell, Golden and Jordan on field. So I was keen to keep that rookie combination on field. Golden hasn't been playing that well, but we know that he's got a really massive ceiling. So I decided to keep him. And obviously Dunkley was out as well. And I brought in Andy Brayshaw via some DPP as well. So yeah, that was who I traded out the back line. Just remembered that. Uh, Golden, I didn't actually get to see this game. So 54, you know, he's lost a little bit of cash there. Yeah, he's, it's definitely time, I think. You can get rid of him. And 
I'll most likely be looking to do that this week. But as I said, any real pickle with my trades at the moment. Uh, James Jordan, oh, if you trade him out, you'd be kicking yourself, wouldn't you? It's like me and, and Cozzy letting him go earlier, just kicking myself after that massive game. And it's the same sort of situation with James Jordan. And I suppose a bit of a lesson that it's... It's, it's okay to be patient with some of these rookies if you know that they've got a decent ceiling. And Jordan has shown that ceiling earlier on in the season. But I understand why people jumped off because it was that time on ground went around that 50 to 60% mark. Complete change in role. So I understand why people jumped off. But I just tried to keep the faith in Jordan. And I'm really happy that I did now. He's looking fantastic. We know Viney's out for at least the next two to three weeks minimum. I think it is. Maybe wrong there. But that... Just means great things for Jordan. He was playing around the midfield as well. A 91 from a rookie on field, absolutely superb. So I'll be keeping on to Jordan. Yeah, you'd say for at least the next month. Dusty didn't play, but yeah, he'll be a welcome addition back into the side this week. Berry, 43. I just think that's going to be around the mark each week for Berry. Not an accumulator. We know that he loves to tackle. We're pretty much on repeat with Berry each week. We know what his strengths are. We know what his weaknesses are. And I just don't see anything in him that suggests high ceiling or 80-plus score anytime soon. He'll probably need to hit the scoreboard two to three times in a match, I think, in order to boost his score right up. And we know that he's not the best user of the ball. I think it was one game he kicked three or four behinds. So, yeah, he's one of those blokes that you'd be tempted to trade out. But similar to a Jordan, you could trade him out too early and then lose some potential gain. But you've got to look at the data, look at the signs, look at your own predictions. And my predictions personally, yeah, I don't see Berry really boosting that cash gen anytime quickly with a massive score. You know, maybe some 60s here and there, which would be nice, still get him up a little bit. But I'm not talking 80 pluses from Berry. It would be something outside the box anyway. But as an owner, certainly hope that he does anyway. Fife is a loophole, so not really relevant. Didn't uh, use him this week. Well, that's the other thing, you know. Highmore didn't play. Mansell did, which was handy. Dusty was out. Fife as a loophole was out. So I really only had berries at emergency, which isn't great. But now that Dusty's back, that looks a lot better now. Now into the ruck. So my advice was to a few people this week, and I do apologize, but I, I sort of don't in a way because it was such a logical move in my opinion. But it was to get, if you look, if you had Josh Dunkley and you didn't have Max Gorn and you were going with a Flynn or whoever else at, at R2, then it's probably a good chance to just get Maxi Gorn in now because there's no suggestions to think he'll throw in a stinker anytime soon. But yeah, unfortunately, this was a week and I know a few people did jump on. So really, really bad luck for that. But I still think it's going to be a really good move in the long term. Look, he will leak some cash. Don't get me wrong. But just remember that this man can just easily turn around the next couple of weeks and go 160 plus. We don't know. I don't even know who he's coming up against to be quite on. So I will need to check that. But with Max Gorn, don't worry. It's it's a tough week. Look, I, I was actually, I, I suppose the only little concern is the fact that Jackson performed really, really well in the ruck in the second half. So Maxi was barely side in the ruck from what I saw. I think it was the third quarter where basically Jackson took over for the whole quarter in the ruck. And Jeezy played well, had the highest disposal count for Melbourne at some stage. I'm thinking, you're joking. I'm, people are sitting here with Petrarca, Oliver, these types, even a Gorn. And, and Luke Jackson is the number one disposal winner. You're, you're kidding me, you know. But he had a phenomenal game. Luke Jackson, and I mentioned it in the stock market last week, you know, he'd be wrapped with Jackson and Cozzy Pickett as a, as a Melbourne supporter. I thought they were some, I won't say dodgy selections, but they were reaches at those picks anyway. That shows how much I know about the recruiting caper. So well done, Melbourne. That was terrific. But going off track, so we'll keep on a bit. It looks short, long story short, don't worry about Max Gorn. This man will bounce back. But I did have the faith this week in the vice captaincy anyway on Brody Grundy because I thought, look, he's coming up against Gold Coast. They've got absolutely no ruck. I mean, he's, he'll dominate. I was actually expecting 160 plus. So 144, you still take that every day of the week. But it was a really nervous situation because scaling hadn't occurred yet. And there was like a couple of minutes um, before the Melbourne game started. And Maxi was going to be my backup captain. And I think at this stage, Grundy was on about a 125. 126 maybe might have been a couple of points more and the, the final scaling still hadn't occurred and i knew that there was about this is all from memory i think there might have been 400 points left for scaling and i was pretty sure that grundy hadn't been scored for the goal that he kicked in the last quarter but again i wasn't certain on this so i thought geez what do i do what do i do 
ended up getting about a minute out before the game, and I thought, look, I need to just make the decision now. And I thought, I'm hoping that Grundy gets about 10 to 15 points at least in scaling, which will give him that 135 to possibly 140, 145 mark. And so I chucked the captain on Brockman, and yeah, worked out really well because he got a 144. That was some nice scaling from him. And of course, Maxi with a 63. And if you're right up there in the rankings, so, you know, top 1,000, let's just say, and you've gone with Gorn as captain this week, teams are getting pretty similar up the top these days. And so if you went with Grundy over Gorn, yeah, that's massive. And if you had to go on the Gorn, then you probably lost some ranking points uh, this week or ranking spots, sorry, this week. You know, these are small decisions that can go such a long way. You know, it's an extra, what's at around 70 points, 70 odd points that you're getting close to 70 to 80 points off that one decision. So it's the same with the rookie roulette. If you're getting really lucky with the rookies for a few weeks in a row, yeah, you're most likely going to have a really successful rounds, but it's really tough to predict these things anyway, isn't it? Flinny, what do you do with him? Jeez, oh, it's frustrating. He should be 400k by now, but Mummy keeps on performing, doesn't he? So you can't trust Leon Cameron. I'm leaving him for now, personally. I just want at least, at least one, hopefully, Two minimum price rise, I think, from Flinney. But frustrating, isn't it? Uh, Zeeble, so a below par game from him, to be quite honest. If you look at his season average, 123.7, 102. Not the best, but you can't complain with a ton from a forward these days. MP74, again, a quiet game. But you look at other blokes in the Hawks' back line. Uh, CJ this week had a really poor score. I think he even went under 50. So CJ's going under 50. MP74, I think you still take that. Warner with a 61. I think I can just forgive him every week because I love him so much as a player. But I'm quite happy just to leave him on field at this stage. He's someone that does have a decent ceiling for a rookie. This is um, quite capable of going an 80, 90 plus type score. So a 61, a bit of a down week. Lost a little bit of cash, but I'm okay with that at the moment because who am I going to trade him to? There's no one I really want to go up. There's no one at this stage want to go down. So I'm just going to leave him, I think. Probably even up until his last buy, I think be the plan with Chatty Warner. Scotty, yeah, rap 63. I think he was on about 40 at, at quarter time, this bloke, and I thought, you are joking me, because he really came on, well, it was Roe, really, that came on for Dusty this week, but, you know, whoever, whoever, they both needed to be played on field this week. But, oh, geez, it was looking good. I, I thought, I'm going to get 100 out of Scott here, and, geez, just going to keep on going up in that price. So, a little bit disappointing with the 63 in the end. So, it was only 23 points, in the last three quarters. So that's about an average of 7.5 points a quarter after opening quarter of 40. So disappointing end, or basically after the start of the game, it was disappointing from Scott. But still a 63, you've got to take these type scores. Uh, R2 this week, so here was the other trade-in. I really didn't want to pay up 170k for R2 type, but I had to go with someone in the end because, as you can see, I had Brockman there, Waterman, Dusty, who's that other mid-forward loop that I've got, was obviously out. So I was staring a donut down because I didn't think Waterman was going to play. So, and, and mind you, I had to make this trade. Uh, when did I make the trade? I think it was on the Friday night. So before the first game, I definitely had to get Dunkley at that stage. So yeah, it was it was tough. Um, I didn't know where to go. Farah, do I even pay up for a Dev Robinson? But I thought with Matho coming into the side, Matho doesn't really play anywhere else apart from that inside mid roll and, and at times half forward. So that's why I didn't end up going with Dev because Matho came into the side. And I think he keeps his spot as well. Pretty solid game from him. Uh, so I did end up going with R2, but I reckon his scaling at the end was a little bit off. Um, and there was another time where he's got a holding the ball, clearly his tackle, you know, holding the ball decision in the back line. Some other Muppet, I forget who it was, takes a ball and, and takes a free kick. And I'm like, you're joking, you know? And then it was in the fourth quarter, got a nice, another tackle holding the ball. I think it was three kicks in a little chain there and just didn't get scored too well. I think he was on 48 at the end of the third quarter and uh, that's only an 11 point quarter. It was much better than 11 point quarter. So a little bit ripped off there. I thought it should have been about a 65 from R2, but you take that 59. As long as he plays each week, I'm just looking for plays in my forward line at the moment to be playing because we'll get to the premiums in a minute. There's just not much there that I like. Brockman was my loop. Don't know when he comes back, if he comes back. Rowe, I just want to trade this bloke out, getting super frustrated with him. Will I be able to this week? Just depends where I go with my trades. Maybe not, though, unfortunately. And then Waterman. Again, I just don't know if 
or when he comes back into the side. Uh, we were sold some fake gold here. You know, terrible conditions. He didn't perform up the Gabba against the Lions. Hasn't got a sniff after that. And uh, they've changed their setup up a little bit there. Obviously uh, got uh, the new fella Brian in, in the ruck. And two metre Peter, he's performed pretty well down forward. Even Jones played really well this week. He looked good this week, Jones, after you know pretty poor start to the season. But yeah, Waterman, I hope he's not dead. May have to rely on an injury in the Essendon forward line, unfortunately. So, yeah, Waterman, not too good. So, bench coverage for lots of teams at the moment is a real, real struggle. So, that gets me to my trades for this week. Well, first of all, what I'll do is... Yeah, this is a good feeling. So, getting... Oh, what am I doing? Going slow. Sorry. Getting Dusty back onto the field there. That's always good. So, my theme at the moment with my trade-ins is I'm looking for value. I'm a little bit concerned at this stage with the rookies that we've got in our bench that we're just not going to have the cash generation to be able to go try to go full uber primo. So I think at this stage of the season, value is going to be a big priority for me. I'm obviously trying not to go around any fake premium. So when I talk about value, they've got to have runs on the board. There's got to be some good data, some good predictions or personal predictions anyway about them. Uh, you know, even things like a friendly fixture, a nice buy. You've got to think about lots of different things. So... Um, look, I'm definitely willing to take a risk here and there, but um, yeah, at this stage, value is my priority. So I think there is a real value pick this week, and it's in our defensive lines. Now, it's tough because I was watching Lockie Neal play, uh, Lockie Whitfield, sorry, play a little bit over the weekend and didn't score overly well. But yeah, for his first game back, found a lot of the peel, and we know what Lockie Whitfield does. So I thought, look, I've got to get Lockie Whitfield in the side, but. Then again, I think to myself, there's a value selection this week. I'll talk about this man in a minute. What's handy is that I've got Laird, who can be part of my midfield, can be part of my defensive line. So the only concern I've got, long story short, with the bloke that I'm looking at is that maybe I will have to skip on Whitfield and also skip on Mills as well, who I really, really rate as a selection. But at this stage, as much as I hate to do it, I think that I'll need to be getting rid of Errol. Now, it doesn't have to be Errol. Just for argument's sake, I can, for example, go out a row. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what I'll do. But, anyway, I'll just show you with Golden. So, Errol needs to go probably within the next two weeks. Or else you just hold him up into the buys. You either probably go with one of the two, I think. Um, if you are looking to trade, this week's probably ideal. But we know that he's got a big ceiling. So it's very dangerous. It's a big risk at the same time. But for me, I'm going out golden. And then with the use of some DPP, I'm going to get Rory Laird back in. And that's going to allow me to get a defender in. Now, the man I'm looking at this week, I actually thought he'd be under 400k. Can't believe that he actually... Went past his break even. I think it was about a 135. And that is Stephen May. So 145 over the weekend. We are paying 408k for this bloke. Now, we know that he's got a really big ceiling. Last year, pretty consistent type scorer. Durability is always a little bit of a concern with Stephen May, but he's got a good roll down back. At the start of the season, I think he opened up his campaign with a 125. And when Dangerfield went out, I actually thought, you know, May could even be an option if I want to strengthen my back line. So I highly considered him back then. Lucky I didn't because we know that he's had a bit of bad luck so far. But after hitting back like he did on the weekend and had a really solid game the week before, similar to Brayshaw, I just think that he's too good to pass up. At 408k probably means that, as I said before, I may miss out on a Whitfield or a Mills. Most, most likely I will. But at the same time, I'm getting in who I think is going to be a keeper. Average 90 plus at 400 odd K. So you've got to get in Stephen May, in my opinion. He's not a must-have, so I shouldn't say you've got to get him in. In my circumstances, it fits my strategy at this stage, which is looking for value, trying to save a little bit of money. You've got around 14 buy, which I don't love. And the fact that I bought him Brayshaw last week and May this week, we both threw that buy. It's something I wasn't planning on doing. But you can't knock that value back purely because of the buys. There's some times to work out a few things before then and employ a few strategies, I think. So for me, Stephen May 
is a bit of a no-brainer selection, but this is going to be my massive decision this week. Now, I've loved Jordan Butts in my side this year. Don't get me wrong, he's been frustrating at times with one up, one down, one up, one down, an 80, a 30, an 80, a 40 type score, but we know that he's going to play every week. He's locked in his role. He can go big. He's got a decent ceiling, but at the same time, obviously, we know that he can throw up some stinkers from time to time. But what I like about him is his job security. Now, my plan for Butts all season, the reason why I selected him was to try to leave him at least on my bench up until the, the buy rounds and then look to upgrade him or downgrade him or do whatever I need to do with him then. But the issue that I've got this week, and this is a big risk, is the fact that Frederick is on the bubble, is 123K, he's got a negative 88 break even, I think it is from memory. Jeez, he's going to be too good almost to pass up. Now, who else do you look at? You know, well, I'm not going to trade any of the five premiums I've got there. Uh, Led's now on the midfield, obviously. Mansell has made, what, 56K. Highmore, I'm hoping he'll play this week and actually make a dollar. So, Butts is really the only logical selection. Look, I can go early on, on Mansell, I understand, and maybe keep Butts, but really, am I going to bring in my bloke you know, make 56k off him and then trade him out? No, probably not. So I'm just hoping that Mansell's got a few more games in him and maybe can get a couple of 60s even. But yeah, it's it's a huge decision because the risk is that I'll leave myself very, very vulnerable down back. You know, Heimel hasn't played, uh, well, he's played two games, but hasn't played in the last five. Mansell, I'm worried that he'll be out sooner rather than later. And Frederick, well, who knows what's going to happen with him? I'm just not too sure about job security and other blokes coming into the side. But he's performed really well, so you can't see him getting dropped, can you? I'm not too sure. So, yeah, look, I've got 150k in the bank, but you can't do a lot with 150k unless you're looking to upgrade someone, maybe like a Warner, to a forward somewhere. But we'll see what it looks like anyway, so... Let's just say we do this, out butts, and then Frederick. How much money will we have? Uh, so 323K. Now, if you think of 323K, you know, there's a fair bit that you can actually do with that money. So, you know, a row, 323, you could probably, yeah, well, you could go up to most forwards next week, even from a row, even if he loses a little bit of cash. Uh, and again, you know, maybe instead of even trading out Errol, I could trade out Rowie. But the issue is, is that whoever got to come back in there, it's going to be Brockman with no DPP to come back in. So you've got to look at your coverage on the bench as well. So I'll complete those just for now. Um, and look, if I do only go with the one trade in the back line and decide to keep on to Jordan Butts, because I can't see myself trading out any other player in the back line apart from Jordan Butts. And I don't want to do that. So... If I do decide to keep on to Butts, then the question is, do you go with a May or do you go with a Frederick? So that's going to be a really, really tough decision because I really, really want them both. And that's why I'm going to the lengths of trading out Butts, which I think could be a bad decision because what happens if Frederick doesn't play next week, gets dropped, or you know, he plays this week, a week after he gets dropped, same as Mansell, Highmore still isn't playing. What am I going to do? I'm absolutely screwed. So... Um, well, what I will have to do in that case is get Laird back and trade out one of these three, I suppose, to avoid a donut. So, yeah, look, that's my plans anyway at this stage. And then next week, I'm just going to play it by ear, I think. But if I've got that amount of money in the bank, it leaves me with lots of, of different options. So it's not quite enough to go up from Berry to a decent midfielder, I don't think. I'll see, you know, what players' prices are like. You know, Jack Steele's someone that's going to, really come down in price. McRae had a bit of a poor round, so he'll be getting close to the 600 mark in the next couple of weeks, you'd think. So, you know, Jared Lyons I love as well. There are a few different options, um, but what I really do need to do, I think, if you look at this forward line, it's absolutely terrible. I've been banging on. I don't even know how long I've been banging on for. I said I'd make this quick, but sorry, guys. I'll just, yeah, talk talk nonsense with Supercoach. But, yeah, if you look at this this forward line very quickly, Zebel, Martin, Impey, Warner, I'm happy with. But then R2, Scott, Rowe, Waterman, yeah, it's not ideal, is it? So I'd love to get at least one of these rookies off the field ASAP. 
but I just I want Butters back. Um, you know, Shy Bolton played really well on the weekend. Zorko is an option. There are certainly some options around, you know, Rowan, but again, I can't go Rowan. I just can't afford to get another round 14 by player in. I just, I can't really do it at this stage. So my options are limited in that respect. So it's it's going to be tough. I'm just not sure. I can't make my mind up in the forward line. And I suppose that's why I'm deciding to upgrade elsewhere at this stage, just until someone absolutely puts a hand up and says, you must pick me. And I just can't see anyone doing that at this stage. So look, I'll leave it there because I have been banging on for a while now. Take care, guys. Hope your round went really, really well as well. I will put out the stocky hopefully Wednesday morning. Uh, just depends how much time I've got tomorrow night. I'll get into it now after I've uploaded this and uh, hopefully out sooner rather than later because, again, some big discussions this week to be had. So take care, guys. Hope all is well, and I'll see you soon in the next one. Cheers. Bye.